What do Elvis and Graceland have to do with accounts payable and fraud? Stick around, you're about to find out. Sadly, they are victims of the ingenuity of criminals who, as you probably know, have been quite successful in finding new and cunning ways to get their grimy hands on either your money or your company's money. We're going to examine three relatively new scams that have been ravaging individuals and companies everywhere. Make sure you stick around until we, the end when we discuss the newest innovation of those nasty please change my bank account emails. You will note in each of the examples we share today the criminals have managed to find a weakness in the process and then exploit the living daylights out of it. Hi guys I'm Mary Schaefer. For the last 25 years I've spent my time eating, drinking, and sleeping accounts payable and related issues. I've shared what I've learned in over 20 published books most still available from online booksellers. Thousands of magazine and newsletter articles, over 600 videos for this channel, and thousands of webinars and conference talks for both educational institutions and service providers. Today I want to talk about fraud and the shrewdness of criminals when it comes to tricking you into sending either your own money or companies, your company's money to them instead of where it rightly belongs. And no one is exempt as evidenced by our first example, which I call selling grace. Land. Now, as probably most of you know, Graceland was the home of the late Elvis Presley, the rock and roll singer. It is a now a museum open to the public, and it is owned by his granddaughter, Riley Keough. And I hope I said her name right. This iconic American landmark is visited by well over half a million people each year. Out of, the, out of what appeared to be nowhere, a company called Nusay, Nusani, and I hope I'm saying that right, Investments and Private Lending, LLC, claimed that Lisa Marie Presley, Riley's mother, who was also deceased, failed to pay back a $3.8 million loan it had given her. It tried to foreclose on the property. It is believed that the loan documents that they presented are forged, and conveniently, the recipient of the supposed loan is not available to shed any light on the matter. In this particular case, the Attorney General of Tennessee stepped in and halted the foreclosure of the property until a thorough investigation could be completed. As we are getting ready to tape this comes a report that the identity of the fraudster, and yes it turned out to be fraud, was an individual involved in the dark web and is somewhat of an expert in identity theft. The person has claimed we have figured out how to steal. They do this by stealing from the deceased and the elderly through birth certificates and other documents. Just another example of criminals finding yet another weakness they can crawl through to get their hands on what doesn't belong to them. And this one, it appears like so many others, is located in a country other than where the fraud is occurring. And by this one, I mean this criminal. Although to be honest, I cannot honestly see how they thought they were going to get away with selling Graceland. Perhaps this was just a ploy for attention, some free publicity to get future business. Ugh. Sadly, this is not the only type of financial fraud related to real estate. Let's take a look at what I call the down payment swindle. This one is particularly ugly as it targets the average person. If you bought or sold any real estate or even rented a place from a larger entity in the last few years, you may have noticed a warning pasted into every email you receive from banks, real estate agents, and lawyers that goes something like this. We do not accept or request changes to wiring instructions via email or fax. Always call to verify. Or here's another one. Warning. Email is neither secure nor confidential. If you receive an email from anyone concerning any real estate requ transaction requesting you re requesting you wire funds anywhere or that you provide non-public personal information such as credit or debit card numbers or bank account numbers or bank routing numbers by unsecured return email do not respond to the message and immediately call your real estate agent your mortgage consultant settlement coordinator or other trust contact. The reasons for these notices is quite simple. Too many people have 
have been conned out of their down payments by one of these messages. Be careful. Do not be, be concerned that you are making a pain of yourself or feel stupid. It's your money. You worked long and hard for it, and you are entitled to take all the extra precautions you want to ensure you are comfortable before sending your hard-earned money to anyone. Be aware that criminals will try and rush you to make a change. That should make you suspicious. One case involved a person who was actually on their way to a closing when they received an email alerting them to the needed supposed change. The criminals will do whatever they can to make you make a rash change without having time to consult or verify anyone. This should be a huge red flag that everything is not as it should be. The variant of this is the letter you received informing you that your mortgage has been sold and you should now be sending mortgage payments to a new address which they prefer or a new bank account if you're paying electronically. What makes this fraud so difficult to detect is that mortgage portfolios are regularly bought and sold, so many of these requests are legitimate. Be aware of the following. When this happens, you should receive two letters, what are called in the trade the hello and goodbye letters. You'll get the goodbye letter first from your existing mortgage holder telling you that the mortgage was sold and if effective such and such date, you should start sending your payments to the new mortgage lender. Then you'll get the hello letter, the introduction from the new mortgage holder telling you where to send payment. Again, call and verify. And when you do that, do not use the phone numbers provided in the letters. This will not be easy. But remember, if you fall for the scam, you are still on the hook for the payments you made to the crook. It is your responsibility to send payments to the right place. I apologize if this seems harsh, but I want to make sure you understand the really ugly outcome of this if you fall for it, and I don't want you to fall for it. As with other types of fraud, be suspicious of change. Be suspicious of anyone who tries to rush you to make a change, and be suspicious if the person you are communicating with demands any sort of security. Remember, if you're wrong, and this is a legitimate request, you can always apologize. A little apology is much better than sending thousands and thousands of dollars to the wrong person. Okay, I'm going to move on. The next scam, uh, because that is exactly what these are, or what I call the reverse con. This kind, this is kind of the consumer variant of the please change my bank account for ACH payments, although it's happening to companies um, in droves, so maybe it's not fair to call it consumer. Accounting and accounts payable professionals who are familiar with this type of scam should make sure that their accounts receivable and credit folks are aware of this. This scam involves an email that goes something along the lines of, we're trying to send you a payment. The bank account new number you gave us is incorrect. Could you please send your correct bank account number? Now, the odds of this being a scam are pretty high. The recipient should do exactly what they do on the reverse side. First, if this is a customer you have given your bank account number to, ask yourself that question. If not, stop and don't bother doing anything. Because if you haven't given them a bank account number, then they can't have the wrong number. If you think the email is legit, pick up the phone and verify using a phone number that you have on hand or use the general number that you can get off the internet. Whatever you do, don't respond using the phone number that they so kindly provided in the email. If the email is fraudulent, so will the phone number. In fact, your accounts receivable folks should model their response on how accounts payable should respond to those please change my bank account emails. We did a video on that, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. And please share it with your accounts receivable folks. Stay safe.